you know, welcome to Raw Down. Welcome. Hey, boys. Raw down. Happy Easter. Happy Easter Xbox. You know what I mean? Happy Easter Xbox. Easter yeah. Easter We're here to talk about God today in the main event. Oh, wait, that's not the main event, is it? We got double main event. Because no. that's, all, that's all they talked about on Raw for the past uh, month was the triple threat and God. And Vince McMahon. Yeah. This is yeah. true. And what a holy day <clears throat> to talk about that match. But we'll get to it. I got no food yeah. in front of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, we forgot to do this off air. So, yeah, Ty, get yeah. your food the fuck away from you. I yeah, got a half drink and bolted. is over. <laughs> yeah. We'll... No chew cast here today. Don't worry, July listener. Enjoy your summer. <laughs> like, March Raw Down is as disgusted with the chew cast as anybody. I yeah, hate it. We've been working on it. Anyway. Who we got here today? This. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yo, it's me, Chaperone yeah. Marty. Yeah, <laughs> Chaperone Marty. I think we got Battle Creek Rob here, too. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, Marty. there's Dave. Yeah. And then we got Benny. Hello. Emerald, you know. I still hate that. <laughs> we got I the new striker. The nail to change that. We got Nico here as well. Full crew uh, today for the pay per view. Uh, Mm-hmm. Pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Studying what's the, the name Alex of the pay-per-view? Coast. It's Backlash, baby. Yeah, I think it's worth talking about how we all watch this pay-per-view because several of us did it in different ways. Yeah. Also, this show sucks. But <laughs> so the way I watch this is usually, listener, I watch all of Raw in one sitting. It's like one hour thirty-five, one hour forty minutes, or whatever. This is two hour forty on Peacock, and it took me. Four attempts to get through this fucking thing. I turned the match off on my the thing off on my first viewing after the first match. The second one, I literally fell asleep during one of these, and the third and fourth, I managed to maintain consciousness. So that's where I'm coming from. The rest of them did something different. If they would like to share that, yeah, we we did it one take. Me and Dave all the way through. Yeah. No stopping, baby. I made it halfway through that. Uh, fell asleep and watched the rest of it uh, just a couple hours ago. <laughs> I I watched it with Ty and Dave, kind of later than everyone else, and then I had to go back and watch the first forty five minutes. Okay, so two people fell asleep watching the show. Yeah. So that's yes. always a good start. But I, I went, and, I went all, all all time, baby, all the way so through. So was this yeah. not the best? Listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. It was not the worst. I disagree, (laughs) but we'll get to that. The worst, well, he's probably going to say New Year's Revolution, but that, I mean, that was shorter. True. Was it shorter? Maybe it felt shorter. Yeah, Yeah. either it was shorter or I just hadn't been crushed by the long, long series of Raws we've been forced to to endure. Yeah, I mean, I thought it had the best uh, women's match on that show, and I thought the main event was fun. So, I don't know. This was a little... Speaking of main event, Ooh. I think we should start with the main event. Because we've been, we've been building it up forever. Actually, you know what? We got one segment before the main event we'll talk about. Because John Cena, you know, he's got to get up for the main event. Got to got to get excited about it. All John says, Cena has... Just finished mainlining all of Camp Laszlo for the fifth time. It's He's ready true. to go. Earlier in the night, we had Maria uh, fuck up one of the matches, and then she introduced and says, "Hey, you know, we got some edge heads in the crowd. We got some Triple H fans. Let's take a look." And then you got some little British kid going, "I love Triple H. I can't wait to see him win." And then you got the one dude going, "Oh, the rated R su- stupid star. He's gonna take the dub." I don't know if he was meant to say that. Then he got, uh, you know, Dave back in 06 going, I want John Cena to win. I love John Cena. You can't see me. Yeah. And then uh, (laughs) there's a dude in a fucking full-ass John Cena, like, jersey with his championship. I was hoping he would say, like, I want Triple H to win. (laughs) That would have been so good. But, yeah, no, they were just like, oh, the Lexington crowd was very uh, mixed, divided, which is kind of shocking. There was not many edgeheads. A lot of Triple H fans. I think they went more yeah. on that in Heat. They showed a lot more Triple H guys. I don't know why he's so fucking over right now. Because uh, he's actually doing good work. I keep telling you. It's like No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. I, I 
I like well, I've at least liked what he's done. Like I don't not with this uh, main event stuff, but like he was actually pretty good during the big show. Few, yes, but... a few months ago he was okay, but he hasn't yeah. been since January. Yeah, and I'm starting to feel like that's because he kind of knew that it was going to turn like this, so he stopped caring as much about this, and he's starting to rev up for hanging out. Uh, no, oh, no. Oh, get spoiled. no. Huh? Who? Yeah, we don't know what happens. Stop talking. What? Yeah, and then... Uh... I... Later on, John Cena's backstage. Why didn't I don't know why anyone else didn't get a backstage promo? And uh, he just starts talking about how he hears all the Edge heads and Triple H fanboys cheering against him, but all he wants to hear is him still be champion. I don't know why they even bothered having John Cena do a little promo because they didn't have anyone else do it, and it was kind of shit. Mm. So like, I don't get it. I think they were just padding time because of an injury. We'll get to that later. Yeah, I was gonna say we'll talk about it later. I feel like. The Matt Stryker one might have been added because of that, but I feel like this one for sure was because nothing happens. Yeah. Although John Cena does say he got death threats, so that's pretty good. <laughs> How dare you beat my my cerebral assassin? <laughs> Fuck you, also, Cena. <laughs> yeah. Also, he says from the hose to the hammers to the haters, one person will be staying at the end of the match, and that'll be Lillian Garcia announcing me as the winner. I thought that was pretty okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll dive we right in. What actually happened. Yeah, we're in the main event now. We'll start off with it. Yeah. So we're starting with this. So you don't have me complaining about the whole two-hour, 20-minute, I think, is when this match starts build up to this fucking thing. And I am on fumes. I am struggling. I have hated this feud for the months it's been happening. Adding an edge to it. I don't know if it made it better or worse, but it sure has prolonged it. So I'm just trying to get to the finish line here. I'm sick of all of this. And somehow, I don't know what happened, but these three men that have not had a good match with anybody in months put together something I thought was actually fun and entertaining. It was insane, dude. (laughs) I had a great time. Yeah. They, like tried and they it was probably about a 15 minute match all things told but like the pacing was actually pretty okay which is a stunner for a triple h match i edge and cena made him like actually work and do things that the crowd would find entertaining so we start off this match everybody's in the ring and then edge goes hey hey and just bails out immediately and starts watching from his uh cuck position on the apron which he does for a few minutes in this match and triple h and john cena yet again consider a smooch they get closer to each other they yeah. really think about it oh yeah but they keep but then they just fight and uh and it's devastating as dave made a comment on the live watch he goes are you kidding me are they going back to the handicap stuff again because like edge was just yeah. watching but that was actually a good callback because they actually paid off bits from a month ago like all the month bits they had edge, i guess like, that's a good point i know we didn't really think about that but i just thought about it he watched yeah. and he was like i finally got them to hate each other and then they said nah dude <laughs> yeah you're so, getting here <laughs> so cena takes over basically immediately he starts hitting all of his shoulder blocks into a vertical suplex i don't know had he just not quite gotten his five moves of doom yet is this pre that he usually does the shoulder blocks the spin out like not the blue thunder bomb the thing that's kind of like it you can't see me aa he doesn't quite do that he hits the shoulder blocks into a vertical suplex i'm not sure i think he's there but like i don't know if he's like does that like all together maybe oh seven I, I think yeah. he's still perfecting it. Yeah, it's weird to see him do some of the sequence, but not all of it. He's yeah. he's and it's the prototype of it, if you will. Yeah, you know, Archer's sitting at home writing notes. He's he's looking up to his childhood hero. R Truth and Dave yeah. both cooking. <laughs> so Cena hits the vertical suplex, Edge gets in the ring and just lightly taps John Cena to break up the pin and then he just leaves. Triple H and John Cena start fighting again. There's a back and forth. Triple H hits a high knee, and then Edge comes back in, breaks the pin up, leaves again, and then Triple H and Cena just start punching each other in the middle of the ring, and Edge gets up on the apron, 
in his true cuck position. He looks very horny for this. They're punching him, and just like, yeah, yeah, get him, get him, get him. And then Triple H and John Cena stop hitting each other, and they both look at Edge, then back to each other, then back at Edge again, who does a good horrified face. And they both charge over to him, pull him in the ring, start tag team beating the shit out of him. And then John Cena clotheslines him out of the ring. We go out onto the floor. Cena grabs Edge's head, smashes it onto the announce table. Triple H comes like, no, 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 this is how you do it. And then he smashes Edge's head on the table. And so for a few minutes, they go back and forth trying to demolish Edge's head with more ferocity on the announce table to one-up each other. And then eventually they decide that he's had enough. Triple H throws Edge back in the ring. John Cena also comes back in, keeps going for Edge, but then Triple H hits him with a massive back shot and throws oh Cena out. Quality back shots from Triple H. It's true. And then Edge takes advantage of the back shot distraction, throws Triple H into the corner, sends him to the outside. So now everybody's outside again. Triple H is on the apron. Edge is, yeah. And Cena pulls Triple H off the apron as he's engaged with Edge, who's just trying to kick him off. Edge somehow falls over as a result of all of this. So John Cena goes to the top rope, hits a splash onto a that was Edge crazy. in the ring, followed by a blue thunder bomb. That was awesome. John Cena does not do splashes, and it's always <laughs> scary to see him up there. But, like, I mean, this was pretty good. I was excited. It's at this point where I'm like, this is actually kind of a good match. And so he goes to do the you can't see me, bounces off the rope, but Lita from the outside pulls the top rope down as John Cena hits it. So he tumbles out of the ring. Triple H throws John Cena in the stairs, and now Triple H is back in the ring. So we have Triple H in the ring with Edge. They go back and forth. Triple H reverses an Irish whip into a face buster. Big clothesline on Edge for two. Another back and forth. Triple H spine buster. Another two count on Edge. Uh, Triple H puts Edge in a sleeper hold, and I go, all right, cool. I guess this is where Triple H decides he's done working. But Edge does shoot him off and then put Triple H in a sleeper. And as this is happening, John Cena comes in and he picks up both of them at the same time in the fireman's carry, which always looks awesome when he does this. And the crowd starts going nuts. Has he done that before? I don't think so. They weren't ready for that yet because I'm sure that I think that happens at Mania one year or SummerSlam. Yeah, he, yeah. he picks up Edge and Big Show at one point. Oh, that's it. Yeah, oh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, whenever that happens. But yeah, John Cena picks up these two large men pretty easy into the fireman's carry. And the crowd's like, holy shit. Edge squirms off of the top, hits the ropes, and spears Cena, who's still holding Triple H. So Cena takes a spear, and Triple H ends up taking like kind of a Samoa drop. But Edge is too sleepy to capitalize. Triple H rolls out of the ring. Edge follows him. This is where we see Carlito Jr., who's just some guy in the audience with either a Carlito wig or has done his hair somewhat like Carlito and looks vaguely like him and is just wearing a shirt that says Carlito Jr. There's a thing about that because, all right, so earlier in the show, like, out of nowhere, Emerald just looks in the crowd and sees a guy with an afro and goes, why is Carlito in the crowd? And I'm like, dude, I'm, I don't know, it's just a fan, dude. I'm like, it's just a fan. And then later on, like, you keep seeing him, you're like, man, that does look a little bit like Carlito. And then they, like, hard cam up when uh, Triple H was on the floor, and it says Carlito Jr. on him. I'm like, what? And I screamed at the, I'm like, oh, I pogged at the TV. I said, wait a minute, that's him. It's actually, how did Emerald know? So, shout out Carlito Jr. Editor Ty will throw his picture up, Yeah, probably. throw up his picture with a sign that says, huh, for a biggin. I don't know, man. Look, look. What? Yeah. Hey, can Carlito yeah. Jr. please hit us up and tell us what that means? Yeah, it's a sign. That just says, "Is it? Does it say huh or does it say Triple H? I th- we'll but never know. One of no, those two I, things. It sure says huh. It says huh for a biggin, because that was the only thing I was able to spot during this fight, because it was a, in fact a good match. And I'm I'm kind of mad you guys took that from me. That was the one thing I wanted to talk about. We'll get back to the big end. We'll hunt if you want it. for a big end. So, so Triple H is now down on, like, the corner by the announce table near Carlito Jr. Edge goes to pick up for the slingshot, and you get a shot of Triple H just blatantly blading 
as Edge is about to set him up for the slingshot, and he hits him into the ring post. Triple H staggers out, and he has cut himself far too deeply. Yeah, this is man bad. is uh, bloody for the rest of the- it's not like Eddie Guerrero or John Cena level blood, but it was thick. it's not great. Yeah. That man did not drink water. He kept spinning it out every time he took a sip because that shit was thick. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's got thick, ropey blood. Unfortunately, only thick ropes he'll expel this match. But oh, man. <laughs> he tried his best. So a... Triple H is now bl- bloody as shit. Edge throws him onto the announce table, gets all of the monitors and whatever off of it, uh, hits the execution on the table, which does not break. So they both just thud onto this thing. Edge yeah. maybe takes the worst of it because his back just smashes on it. And he's and smeared blood. everywhere yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the table is white under all that, so there's just blood smeared Ugh. all over the table. Oh, yeah. Such a cool spot, it, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really cool. Like, again, this was a good match. I am just as stunned as anybody. Mm-hmm. But so, there's blood all over the table. Everybody takes the second to rest, and on TV we get a few shots of Triple H just bleeding to death. Some replays of the things that have happened. And we get, and then we go back to the ring where Cena has re entered. And then Edge goes to the top rope, hits a kick onto Cena, gets two. They start going back and forth. Cena gets Edge into the STFU and Cena just starts screaming as Edge is coming to, is coming and coming and coming to the rope by the announce table. He's almost got his hand up. But then we see bloody Triple H come in, standing, and just grab Edge's hand so he can't get the rope. And then he hits Cena, who's also right there because he's on top of Edge with a microphone in the head. Triple H then falls over from from blood loss. Edge tumbles out of the ring. Triple H then goes to grab a chair and bashes the absolute dog shit out of Edge with it, sending him tumbling over the ring barrier into the crowd. And then Dumbles into the ring with blood and chair and is immediately put in the STFU for quite a bit. He collapses somewhat near the rope. The ref starts doing the thing where they pick up their arms and drop it for the three count, see if he's still alive. We get to two and a half, and Triple H catches his arm, holds it up, carries Cena on his back, gets the rope. Cena transitions pretty quickly into the FU. Picks up Triple H, who squirms out, reverses Cena into the pedigree, and then Cena hits him with the drop toe hold back into another STFU. Edge is reawoken at this point, comes crawling back to the apron. He goes up on the top rope to hit something on this boy pile, but John Cena decides to just let go of Triple H, go up to the rope, start fighting Edge. He eventually gets Edge into the fireman's carry on the second row, but Triple H wakes up, runs under Cena, stands under him, and effectively hits Cena with a back suplex, who is also holding Edge, so Edge is taking a Samoa drop from the top and Cena vertical suplex from second. Lita now comes in with a chair, and she goes to hit Triple H, who ducks it and spine busters her, but as he's picking her up, she lets go of the chair. So the chair flies up and then comes back down on the back of Lita's head and Triple H's shoulder. So he staggers up with chair, considers which of the Edge or Cena, who are both dead in the ring now, to hit hit it with. Looks at the crowd, gets a big smile on his face, goes out under the ring, and he grabs his big wooden cock (gasps) from under the ring. Oh, yes. He pulls it out. There's two meaty boys in here that just want a serving of his cock. He surveys it. He strokes the shaft. He begs John Cena to recover so he can get just finally this cock smash. He got a back shot earlier, but he just needs this final blow. But Edge comes out of nowhere, spears Triple H, and now he has grabbed Triple H's cock. But he doesn't know what to do with it. He is not proficient with this sort of thing. Edge may be a sex haver, but Triple H's shaft is something he is not familiar with. So he is unable to strike John Cena with Triple H's cock. John Cena's incel AT field 
just simply will not allow Triple H's cock to level him. So Cena hoists Edge up in the fireman's carry again. Triple H, on his knees, goes in front of John Cena, low blows him, low blows him. Triple H is low blowing John Cena while on his knees. John Cena tumbles back, drops Edge out of the ring, staggers back toward Triple H, who gets him into the pedigree. But then Cena get just flips him back over, flips over him, does the... Uh, I forget what you call it, but the Bret Hart on a fucking a British Bulldog at SummerSlam. Yes, jackknife pin on a Triple H for the win. And this was a very good match, but unfortunately at the end we get more bullshit where Triple H uh, beat just wakes up, hits John pretty soon after the pin that he's, you know, taking a clean pin in the main, in the center of the ring in the main event again against John Cena. But he gets up, hits Cena... Triple H then grabs his cock, and he starts hitting everybody with it. He hits the ref, he hits Edge, he hits John Cena. Triple H's cock is being flung everywhere. And then he poses for the crowd, holding his cock as his music plays. He hits the suck it, and the people love it. The people love the suck it. But now, I think we're just getting more of this Triple H thing. who was just lost clean in the main event. Several times now, but I guess you still look strong. There was brother. a scary moment at that end. So like Edge got clocked by a chair, not the not the sledge. He just hit the ref with the sledge for whatever reason. He killed them. Okay. He smacked the uh, edge with the chair and like it dented his head. And then as he threw it to the ground, Lita came in and he spine buster Lita, but the chair didn't like properly sit down. And so like he goes to spine buster her and it just like almost clips her like while it was sitting like up way. So that would have killed her back if he actually hit her. I think it like, what was it, Dave? He like hit his knee, like Triple H's knee, like clipped it as he yeah, was spine busting him. Do it, yeah. Or her, yeah. And it was just nasty. I was like, holy shit, Lita, you can't be taking that spot, dude. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, that that's was probably why she got super drunk. Yeah. No, she. We'll we'll get to that. That was a an earlier on segment, but that was probably one of the best matches I've seen doing this. Like, it's up there with the Edge, Ric Flair, TLC match. It's up there with Angle Taker. Um, yeah. It's up there with Angle Mysterio from, like, last week. It's just good matches. That's it's. I'm happy about it. It's split. Raw and SmackDown got some good matches. Crazy, if you want to believe it. it. Is. Yeah, and- cor- yeah, Corpulent Donald gave this four and a quarter. Really? Wow. Yeah. Four and a quarter? That's crazy. They deserve that, it. That, yeah, no, it was hard hitting. I mean, it's like this was one of the most boring lead ups outside the WrestleMania build and this but this one paid off a lot better. I hate that everything they set up, which was stupid and bullshit, they paid it off in a meaningful way. And now I'm like, damn, wait, were they cooking? Yeah, I guess well, Am I psyoped into letting them cook? Yeah, we got psyoped on this one because like, you know, <laughs> it, just, it was one of the worst spills. We're like, oh, they don't give two shits about this and they have that match, and it's actually pretty damn good. Yeah, what did uh, what did the the freaks think? And by freaks, I mean Emerald and Dave. Whoa. Well, I thought it was a decent match. Uh, a lot of good fighting, a lot of good moves, uh, a lot of blood. Um, That's what you like. However, <laughs> so we have we stated that um, Edge uh did the big slamo on Triple H on the announcers table. This was not. The English announcer's table. It was the Spanish announcer's table. Yeah. They got evacuated from that table because of that. So I want to see just this fight from the Spanish commentator's side because they must have been going buck wild that that they just got evicted from their table because Triple H's bloody face got smashed into it. They're probably used to it. They have yeah, this all the time. Happen. <laughs> it's always the Spanish announce table. Hmm. Hmm. That's sus. <laughs> well, because like on the normal episodes, like I think at one point they had raw commentary crew, like what on the entranceway. They're like, please stop okay. breaking the tables. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like but, 05. Yeah. No, this is this is a solid match. Like, look, I'm a mark for Triple H, stupid sledgehammer action. So I was 
thoroughly I thoroughly enjoyed all this match. Also, yeah, there's blood everywhere, which is a staple, I think, of old wrestling. Was it two thousand? It it may get real crazy, but yeah, I just I don't know. Like you said, the buildup. Now that you mentioned it, calling back to all of the buildup that uh, we hated, paid off more or less, and that was actually really cool. Um, and everyone got to do cool spots. Fireman carry, sledgehammers. You had Edge just being a weird goblin man for 20 minutes. It was just a good match. Surprising. Hey. Hi, hello. That main event was great, but we got main sent event. into a fucking time loop because now we're at the beginning. Hold on. Huh? Yeah. What do you mean, hold huh? on? Oh, well, no, for actually, a this, this, nah, that, that was Come for a one. This is where I wanted to... S- we're at the beginning. I think the first thing we should mention is the commentary. Oh. Yes. Tim Roth, fucking Coach, and Joey Styles aren't here. But wait. We'll start the show in a sec. Because me, Dave, and uh, Emerald watched Heat. And oh. we got to go a little Heat because Rob Conway's here, guys. And he's blonde now. He's blonde now. He's blonde well, he's now. Blonde Conway. Blonde Conway is here. Just look at him. We'll go over it. It's going to be a two-second thing because uh, the match was okay. The crowd really didn't understand what was going on. Goldust looks supremely out of shape, like oh, yeah. really bad. Like I really hope oh, he was yeah. – like I'm glad he's doing okay now, but like he looked really rough. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting close to his Black Rain era. I, I don't know what they were doing with Conway at this point. He got some offense in. He looked good with a neck breaker, but ever, if you can't hit a neck breaker, man. Can't really do much. Goldust does his little punches where he breathes in, and then he beat him with a power slam. Martin, a yeah. power slam. That that's what killed Conway. How could they do this to Rob not, Conway? Not even a fucking finisher. And they had uh, Styles and uh, Lawler on the heat. So Styles was there. I guess they just shoot him away afterwards. Good. Uh, the only the only <laughs> thing else of note on Heat, uh, they had Maria and Todd Grisham in the crowd, and uh, Maria goes, "I love to ride," and then there was silence from the crowd and from Todd, and that's about it. That's all I gotta say because like I'm like, what were they cooking? Were they doing a sexual bit? Because nobody responded. That's okay. Fair enough. She loves yeah. to ride. We're in the we're in the horse county, as I keep saying. They they love horses here in Lexington, Kentucky. Horse. Yeah, they do. And we shoo Joey Styles away. We give him the AA. Tell him to fuck off because JR is here, baby. Oh, time. Thank God. Dude, honestly, this is like, this is what prevents it from being the worst thing we've watched. It's just having Jim Ross on this phone. Jim Ross, show. yeah, he adds a lot of quality to it. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I'm just glad he's here. And I, I really hope that he comes to Raw, but I'm sure he's not. I'm sure we're going to get Coach again. I'm sure we're going to get Styles again. We're going to go back to our depressive state. But, you know, we got main event Marty. He did the main event. And now we got Carlito. (laughs) Speaking of depressive states, Chris Masters and Carlito are here. He got the fucking shiny on. Chris Masters looked so good. He was so shiny. (laughs) I love Chris Masters' entrance. I do not care. It looks like he's so important. But he's yeah, not. Yeah, it's really good. But, <laughs> but he's, he's not a never. I know. He never wins a fucking match. Oh, he should have won. <laughs> but we'll so, go. Yeah. And, yeah. So we get a recap of this interminable feud that's been going on for months, which luckily eats up some of this match time. But boy, does this match go too long. I don't know how long this match actually was, but it felt like half an hour. I'll get the match so time. So Carlito comes out. He's got his epic "Do you spit or swallow?" shirt on. Get it? Like come and apple. <laughs> <laughs> Very <Coming> funny. <laughs> There's a teacher in the crowd that appears to be a fan of Carlito. I fear for the children in their class. As I mean, all teachers are overpaid, but this teacher especially <laughs> should just be fired. Yeah, fuck those teachers, man. <laughs> I agree. The worst teacher of all time is on the show later. No. We'll get to that. Oh, no. So. Oh, no. Or maybe it'll just get banned forever and we'll say, fuck this. I don't know. Either way, we start this match off. Carlito and Chris Masters, a guy that won't work and a guy that can't work. What do we do? (laughs) Strikes. Holds. Strikes. Holds. Strikes. Holds. 
we love to see it. Traditionally, listener, because this comes up later, an opening match is supposed to be either some kind of multi-man match or maybe a ladder match or like a Rey Mysterio or a Rob Van Dam or whatever. People that do something athletic and have a cool, fun match to warm up the crowd. This is what a first match is supposed to be. This is theoretically when a crowd is at its most like hot because they've been in their seats for not super long. They're not tired. They've just gotten their bevies, so they're maybe a little buzzed, but not hammered yet. They're not all about to fall asleep because they're bedtime because these things are too late and always go too long. This is a crowd that is supposed to be maybe ideally they're at their peak in their main event but this is when a crowd is probably the most inclined to forgive some kind of bullshit so we start off strikes hold strikes hold strikes holds we fucking love it carlito takes over briefly there's a back body drop we have our first actual bump of the match yes. it's probably been three or four minutes i can't believe it he counters another back body dropper versus a... I legitimately don't know what Chris Masters was going for, but he's trying for a something. And Carlito puts in the master lock. That was Oh so my cool. god. That was good. <laughs> and, yeah, Chris Masters breaks it. Aww. And then Chris Masters thrown over the ropes. Carlito does a plancha. A second bump. Now what do we do? Ten counts in the corner. Strikes in the corner. Strikes in the corner. Every single corner. We love working the corners. The people are excited about you just punching people in a corner. Because one of you won't work and one of you can't. I write maybe, I don't know, 33% of my breakdown of this match. This shit sucks. <laughs> it is awful. A buckle bomb on the Carlito. Carlito selling the head. I write, why is this the opener? Who is excited by this? It was me. <laughs> somebody was has a, somebody has a sign that says poop dog. Oh. <laughs> is that you, Ty? Emerald shuffling through his notes, throwing them at the floor, going, damn it! That was the I only bit! No damn it! <laughs> we keep getting heat onto Carlito. This is worse than Raw matches, where they're just filling time. Just heat, 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 strikes, 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 holds, holds, holds. There have I have told you every move that has happened. It's three of them, and one is a back body drop. Jerry Lawler says both of these men have a bright future in WWE. No, they don't. I mean, Carlito's still <laughs> They around. do not. We keep getting more heat. The announcer is desperate for anything to talk. Like, oh, Carlito's only 27. They talk about that a lot because nothing is happening. He, he, he. Some brave hero in the crowd gets a this is boring chant going. This is the opening match. This is when the crowd is the most inclined to go with you on what you're doing. If you get this is boring in the opening match, that is an achievement, everybody. <laughs> that is an achievement. Somebody holds the sign says Triple H fears Samoa Joe. Oh, man. That's crazy. Chris Matt. Yeah, in 06, Chris Masters calls for oh, the master lock. He puts it in. Carlito reverses it into a pin for two. Now we get another bump. I called this bump three. I'm going to be charitable and call the back body drop a real bump. For bump four, he hits a springboard back elbow. Cool. This crowd seems to like Carlito. I don't know why. Carlito throws an apple in the air, and Chris Masters, like a dog, just yeah. looks at the apple, and then Carlito just starts doing the most basic bullshit offense you have ever seen. This dude is a creator wrestler. When you start a <laughs> WWE 2K game, this is your default moveset, and it is just punches and kicks because you're out of stamina to do anything else. Basic offense. He gets in a pin, and Chris Masters forgets to kick out. Yeah, that was bad. So Mike Kyoto just stops counting. It's the opening match, and Chris Mass is about to just not kick out of some generic bullshit. Mike Kyoto, you fucker, why did you keep this match going? Now, another real bump, kind of. Carlito goes to hit a moonsault. Chris Masters 
is not positioned for this. So Carlito fucking barely grazes his arm, and also Chris Masters falls down about two seconds before Carlito would have actually made contact. This shit sucks. Carlito throws Chris Masters into the corner, hits a backstabber, and then pins and then pins uh, Chris Masters with his feet on the ropes for didn't the three. Really need to do that. No, Dave Meltzer gave this three stars. I, what is he cooking? All right, all right. This shit was awful. I, as a you know, again, I'll keep going into our live watch. I got really excited about this match. Dave can attest to it. I don't know why. why? I, yeah, I, I, I liked why? it. I liked huge. it. I thought it was fun. I don't know. <laughs> Name what was fun. Name I like two things that happened. The, <laughs> I love the apple spot. He fucking made him look silly. I like the the full Nelson. Like It's like, hey, dude, I know you well enough. I'm going to do your move. But Chris Masters is like, bitch, that's my move. You can't get me with the master lock. He throws him out of that easily. That can't happens every this. week. Does it happen every week? Every week, somebody tries to put him in it, and he breaks out. Well, of his, it. his lats are too big. like seven times. His lats are too big. His shoulders are too big. You can't stop him. I um, Carlito's got a great drop kick. Let's just say that. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. He got a good. He got a good uh, springboard back elbow. Um, the only thing that I'd say like really killed the match was the fake count that really made Chris Masters look bad. Like even like taking I, all your I stuff think- out of it. I think what killed the match was the people chanting, this is boring. I heard people cheer for Carlito. They like Carlito. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like, they did. Yeah. They also said, this is boring. I don't know why they like Carlito. They, this they, was a boring, boring-ass match. I did hear Master Sucks chants, but he was just too young. I think they really yeah. needed to put him in, like, OVW. But he's got a look. He's got a look. He's got a great entrance. He's just not there yet. I really wish they would have developed him a little bit more. Maybe it would have had better I wish, impact. I wish they'd put him with somebody that actually felt like fucking trying to do anything, but yeah, Carlito I doesn't. I, uh, I yeah. didn't think it was, like, match of the night, but I thought it was, like, a good match. It blew me away because I expected, like, what you were saying. Like, as you're, like, I, as you're perceiving as, like, awful, I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm liking it. So it's, it's interesting to hear you say, like, how bad it is. I liked it. I, I thought it was crazy. decent. Worst match of the night, not <laughs> That's close. That's not the worst. No. <laughs> There's no way that was the worst. This one that's far worse. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Martin's it's worse up than the bed. match I fell asleep in. Which one was the one? Ooh. Will you say which one you fell asleep in? RVD and Shelton Benjamin. Oh, okay. That shit yeah. was so <laughs> boring. Shelton, that was a disappointment. I, think I don't know. a reason for yeah. that. We'll get to that, but yeah, yeah I, I, anyway, that should have. This opened. shit sucked. If they would have swapped it around, maybe it would have been a little more impactful, like later on. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. I, to be fair to them, I think there's a reason it was so boring that we'll get to, but um, we'll get to it. Maria gets on the mic and she goes, "Congratulations! I'm sorry for the crowd that has to deal with Chris Masters beating Carlito. I sure that that didn't happen, but thanks, Maria." And then we go into a little bit about, you know, the fans and the edgeheads. And Lita interrupts her and goes, you know what? I don't care what people think. I'm uh, I'm here in Lexington uh, with all the virgins in the crowd calling me a hoe. And I'm like, Lita, are you okay, dude? Like, what's wrong? Like, she's, she's fucking drunk. Gotta be, right? Like, there's no way. She's so gone. Unless she's on something else now. I don't know. She seems so out of it. She's like, Maria, you want to fight me? <laughs> I thought she was putting on like a shitty Southern drawl for like, cause she's there in Kentucky yeah, and mocking him. But no, she just kept going with the bit. Uh, once edge wins, we're not going to be having a public sex celebration. We're going to be having a private sex celebration. And she starts like feeling up her, her collar. And then she leaves. I'm like, what is the, why did you do that? Why did you do that? <laughs> that looks so bad. Jim, Jim Ross calls Maria a handsome young filly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, I think there was a lot of pauses during their promo because they expected the crowd to like interact. But the crowd probably was like sweating, going like, is she okay? Like, I don't want to call her a hoe if she's like... Not okay. The crowd just watched that match. They were all asleep. Oh, man, come on. 
Well, they gotta wake up because uh, Sausage Man is here. That was a Armando, Alejandro, Alejandro. Estrada. That's right. He's here with the sausage, bringing out his boy Umaga, who you know just kind of runs around and yells. What but it's here, on? and everyone's excited. And who is he going to fight? None other than Ric Flair, the man who Woo. grabbed his dick like a week ago Woo. and yelled at him. So, as Flair is making his way down to the ring, he's met outside the ring before the match even starts by Umaga, just beating him up, throwing him in the ring, and then ring the bell. Uh, and then Ric Flair pokes his eyes and then just begins to chop him in the neck a million times. He then manipulates the referee, as they put it, by standing in between both of them so he could low blow Umaga. Umaga's got a 60 inch chest. He does not care about any of this. Massive to man, dude. He's so huge. So Ric Flair then tries to chop his legs out after falling and trying to put him into the figure four. Umaga breaks free of the lock, gets up, slaps Ric Flair, ties him up in the ropes like usual, and hits him with a, a running headbutt, and then runs and slams his butt into him. And then runs and does a diving Samoan spike into his neck. He has been destroyed literally in record time, according to all the commentators. I think, yeah, the match went about <laughs> as long as the Rob Conway Goldust match. It's so like, I don't yeah, know if it was record it was time. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, but they, they really wanted you to know. It went 329, according to this. Yeah, but viewers, just so you know, a lot of that was them just kind of either walking around the ring to restart the match or uh, writhing as they just slowly chopped each other. Yeah. I feel like to make that match a little more like impactful, I guess that's the word of the day. Uh, yeah. Just to have Umaga flat out kill Ric Flair. They didn't need Ric Flair to be doing the chops, the hope spots. You don't need to be the nature boy in this moment because this man is big, beefy, and your new mm-hmm. hot ticket to having a big monster heel. Why is Ric Flair getting his to, dick kicks in? <laughs> all they of, keep trying to like contrast it with Ric Flair is so crafty that he can try to take down this beast of a man. But who knows? Maybe it'll pay off in a thousand years, but I just don't see it going anywhere. Yeah. But. An important note I think we need to talk about. Yeah. This is the biggest penis that Alejandro has ever smoked. Oh my god, episode. he did pull out the oh, big don't penis. Don't worry. Don't worry, yeah. we were getting them. Okay, yeah. Ty, put up the just gigantic yes. hog that Alejandro was smoking here. It is... Yeah, so well, as I don't the... know how you get one of these. It Dude. is massive. Yeah, so as the camera is, you know, just panning around the ring while Umaga is cheering and Alejandro is patting his back, Alejandro pulls out the biggest doink ever from his sausage pocket and just begins to chew on it. And then Umaga looks at him and starts chewing on the top rope. Uh, and they just do that for a few minutes. And then the commentary team uh, talks about how there's going to be an illegal immigrant work stoppage. Yes. So Alejandro and Umaga might not show up to Raw tomorrow. Is that what that was about? I just caught illegal immigrant work stoppage. I couldn't believe it. What the fuck is Jerry cooking? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But he was like, oh, yeah, they're going to be at Raw tomorrow? What's going to happen? I don't know. But there's an illegal immigrant work stoppage, so he might not be there. Damn. Unhinged. Um, to go back earlier, Martin, the, the Chris Masters Carlito match went 9 minutes 58 seconds. Yeah, that's too long. <laughs> they didn't crack 10. We um, need Umaga to crack 25 minute match. Backstage. Please. You got Shane Brandon McMahon. You got Vincent Kennedy McMahon. They're hanging out. Vince's got his uh, his wife beater on. He's showing off his muscles. And he's like, Shane, I'm ready for this tag team match. And Shane goes, isn't this more like a handicap match? And Vince goes, what? Are you talk? This is a tag team match. You know, um, when it comes to Shane's tag team partner, I want him all for myself. He goes, let me show you something, Shane. And he takes his water bottle out of his hand. He starts pouring it on the ground. And he starts stepping on it. And he goes, look at me. 
I'm walking on water. And you know what, Shane? I got something else for you. And he's, I don't know why he just has a ta- like a like a table in the back with a plate of f- like one fish and one loaf of bread, and he starts breaking that was off not a the- loaf of bread. That was a fucking Italian baguette. bread. Yeah, it's got like you know like Italian bread. He starts breaking it in half, and he just tosses it. He tosses the fish. He's just throwing it everywhere. And he's like, "Look what I did, Shane." Look at this. And then for some reason, they had some schmuck in the back just start tossing a bunch of fish and bread at Vince. This is a fucking Looney Tunes bit. And he's just laughing. Like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Look at how bountiful our feast is. And then he picks up a fish and he goes, ugh, stinks. Hey, Shane. Holy mackerel. And then yeah, he just Vince, leaves. Vince has just done... Far too much code. Hold on. Hold on. The, off screen, Shane grabs his bottle again, and he takes a sip, and he goes, huh? And it's wine. Oh, Vince, you'd sly dog. Or was it God? We'll find out later. Holy mackerel. <laughs> it would have been funnier. It would have been funnier if the water bottle was drugged like they did to... Shawn Michaels. Yeah, but if they did, they would have to implement that sound effect, and they could only afford it for one raw. So they can't have the slur- slurping noise. Listeners, you love the slurping noise. Ty provides it every week. It's Whoa. true. Check out Raw Down episode 30 for what's all a chew cast. It's just me eating. <laughs> it's not true. I'm sorry. Um... But yeah, that that was insane. Like I I never seen that promo before. It took me off guard. I was cackling the whole time. Welcome to Easter. We got a <laughs> Welcome to Easter. Happy Mubar uh, Ramadan. Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I ate at a, a Muslim pizza joint the other day. It was pretty good. Got a Tandoori Lovers pizza. It was it was busted, okay. not going to lie. It's good. Shout out to them. I don't want to dox them, so Shout out to them. Good food. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. What about this women's title match, Nico? Uh, they dropped right. a bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they dropped it. I mean, they. I think they kind of already alluded that last week when they were like, you know, Mickey was like, okay, I'm done now. Again, the whole reason Trish was doing it was to get in our head. So the bits dropped. So, Mickey James comes out first, because of course she does. Because clearly, Vince is still mad about WrestleMania, so. And then, you know, just classic Mickey James, just doing her thing. And then Trish comes out, and, you know, Trish is, again, she's not doing the Mickey James thing. Same outfit. Though, I'm used to her, usually in, like, the black outfit. She got some skin-colored outfit with some blue linings. Definitely uh, unexpected, but... Ah, it looked fine. Uh, I'd say they start off with some good heat. Some nice blows. Um, At some point, I think it was... Lita jumps out of the ring and attacks Mickey. Um, But I will say, this is probably the weakest of their matches. Apparently, at some point, Trish gets injured... And what yeah. they basically do is, at this point, you know, they got to come up with something. So, uh, I believe Mickey gets some tape. She chokes her out. And then she basically, yeah, basically gets the five count. And then she basically beats her to a pulp. And then that's kind of the match. You know, a lot of kicks on her out. You know, just, I think they're trying to sell that Trish has to go away for a while. It could have been but... a good match, but they just, it, it it's, un- it's unfortunate that the injury happened. Yeah. It was one of no, her own yeah, it was, <laughs> and then Mickey and then Trish got like shoot injured in the middle of it. Not even the middle, like within two minutes. Exactly. Yeah, like she... I, I look away for five seconds, and like I, I'm again live stream. <laughs> we were watching it, and I go, wait, what? Yep. Huh? DQ? Yeah. What? No. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. After it happened, Trish just selling the right arm, and Mickey went for three pins in a row that all got kicked out of. And so then, like goofy. Nico said, she grabbed a hair tie or something and just choke trish out until the five count and got dq'd so mickey keeps the belt but trish technically wins it's a good way to end it at least because it doesn't make trish look like a fucking loser just losing like so fast like she's like no no just dq me yeah okay i mean good 
Not that they get that much respect anyways, but... Yeah, no, this was, like, the weakest, but that doesn't mean it was bad. It's just... It was good it's for the 90 seconds that Trish had two working arms. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunate. It, it really sucks. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Yeah, you know, nothing you can really do. The commentary was really ho fucking horny. <laughs> In this match, Jerry <laughs> wonders why Mickey James is content with just being a hot diva. Jim Ross at one point says a little therapy wouldn't hurt any of us. Thank you, woke Jim Ross in 2006. Jerry's just like, man, I'll fuck Mickey. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. I'm all about it. And they are both mega horny for Trish. Most oh, of this yeah. match, which oh, the how long does this match actually end up going? Like four or five? It says on the times, it says seven minutes and three seconds, but I don't believe that. There's really? no way. I, that's two probably, of that, that's that, including yeah. after the DQ, I think. And I have a thing afterwards here that says four minutes. So, like, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, like, you know, Trish does a matrix dodge of a clothesline, backflips into a head scissors, jumps off of the apron into a Thez press. Like, they were doing cool stuff, but then Trish went for a splash into the corner, but Mickey threw her over the ropes. And then when Trish fell, she dislocated her shoulder, apparently. And that was, oh, you know, so there's only, she couldn't oh. get it popped back in enough to fit, to really yeah. do much or whatever. And yeah. just, yeah. Wikipedia has it at 703 and Cage Match has it at 405. 405, yeah, so, I think. So That's probably right. 405 is probably the actual match, yeah. 7, for the whole segment. That's what I'm thinking. Dave went on a sick one, because this next match got three and a three-quarter star. That's crazy. That's crazy. But real quick, we're huh? backstage, and Shawn Michaels is here. Well, first, this is where Maria oh, yeah. admits to oh, apologizes God. for fucking up. My bad, dog. The last segment. Yeah, Carlito won. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, hey, sorry about that. Anyway, here's Shawn. I don't think anyone would have cared, honestly. <laughs> I didn't even notice yeah, it until it... I rewatched it. Yeah. Uh, Shawn says the he's like, well, you know. I'm in this handicap match, and he wants to see if God's on my side. Well, I don't like to push my Christianity down anyone's throat. You know what? You know, it's kind of sad, though, because Vince has been pushing that. But whatever. You know, Sean's like, hey, you know, the Lord's always on my side. No matter what. Doesn't matter. So, I will get through this match. And you know what? I got two words for you. And I'm like, wait, no, you can't. Sean, no. Sean. You can't just say how good good and godly you are and then tell people to suck your penis. Sean, no. Suck his holy cock! Oh, no, is Vince right? Is Vince brought Jeez. out the... Oh, no. Yeah, that was kind of weird, you know? It's almost like they're building to something, but that can't be it. That can't be nothing. No, no that can't be nothing. I don't like it. No, like, yeah, it's just kind of weird in that case. Like, why? Well, Get why this heathen off my screen, because we got the Money in the Bank versus the Intercontinental Championship match. RVD defending his bank and mm. Sheldon defending his title. You know I, I mean? agree with whoever's yawning. <laughs> yeah, that was my review of them. <laughs> I this match was great, but it turned into just being decent because of how long it went. It went eighteen minutes and forty two seconds. Are you shitting me? This is not R V D E C W. Get yeah, this off I, my screen. In their defense have to assume what happened here is Trish and Mickey was supposed to go a lot longer. So, like, five minutes before they went out, they got told they have whatever amount of time to fill. Now, RVD should be good enough to fill that amount of time with something, but in their defense, I do think this went longer than it was planned to. As I was uh, hanging out with the boys the other day, one of our friends said, you gotta watch this RVD Jerry Lynn match from ECW. And then we were about 20 minutes into the 23-minute match, and he goes, you know what? Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> and he's like, you know what? I got to get going. And I'm like, dude, you already made it 20 minutes in. You got three minutes left. You got to stay. <laughs> These ma RVD used to be like the Triple H of his time. He just couldn't uh, stop like sniffing his own farts. He's like, I got to have the longest match. I'm the star. And you can see it here. Because they were cooking with fucking grease. They had nothing. <laughs> they had nothing and they just kept going. Because at least 12 minutes in, I'm like, this match is good. And then Martin fell asleep. 
and then everyone fell asleep. And I was like, how long do we have left of the show? And we looked, it's like 50 minutes in. I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, I also was fucking just distraught when I saw I had two hours left at the end of this. But, yeah, you should actually say what happens in this match instead of just complaining that it yeah. sucks. Yeah, Nico, Dave, what you got on this match? Any uh, any high, hot notes? Oh, wait, no. I apologize. I'll cut that out. It was me and, me and Emerald this segment. You guys got the <laughs> match. I'll cut that out. Back here. Nah, keep it. Keep it. Emerald, yeah. what do you think about this, yeah. this match, pal? Well, okay. It was it was going good. And then, and then it went for too long because uh, something happened earlier. They had to prolong it. But I guess it really it really showed that these guys want each other's titles. They want each other. They want uh, Shelton Benjamin wants that uh, Money in the Bank. Uh, Show me RBG Benjamin. wants that Intercontinental Championship belt. So they're really fighting for it. They kept going. They kept falling down. They kept getting back up, getting real sweaty. But yeah, it just went for I just... far too long. The crowd was starting to wane. I don't think and... Benjamin was ready for that long of a match because, like, no. he started to gas really hard. I know RVD can do it because he's done it plenty of times. I don't know if at this moment he can do something like that, but, you know, going on early, there was a lot of cool spots with a uh, spin kick uh, by Benjamin. Benjamin can hit those nasty fucking spin kicks. You just, like, you grab his leg, you throw him around, he spins around, hits. RVD does the same thing. He'll, yeah. he'll do a little spin kick, you grab his leg, and he just kick you, and it's like, holy shit, these guys are you know, playing off each other so well. Benjamin yeah. avoids a rolling thunder, gets out of the floor. Van Dam jumps over the ropes, gets a Piscato. Crazy, insane shit that they're doing. But it doesn't matter because it's just like, damn, what the fuck? Benjamin even jumps over the ropes while RVD was on there and Sunset Flip power bombs him on the floor. Insane. Yeah. He almost blows his shit out as he <laughs> does that. And then my next note is... I am shoot falling asleep, so this must have been. After that is when I fell asleep. I mean, it seems. was it Rob? Uh, Rob got Dude. hit into an exploder, uh, exploder suplex. Rob elbows him out, goes to run for another rolling thunder, and then Benjamin's up and Samoan drops him. Yeah, like here you give the recap, right? By it's all measures, so this should have been an awesome match. I know, but just no one, just no one cared. Um, yeah, they they. This had to have been a plan for a 10-minute match, and then they, right before, because of the injury, got told they had to go a few more. There were clearly spots they had planned, but they just had to stretch. Like They would do a cool spot, and then two minutes of nothing. Yeah, And I know yeah. two minutes doesn't sound that long, but in wrestling, it's for goddamn ever. That's a whole Umaga people. match. Yeah. Like if I I'm explaining this, it sounds like it's going so fast. Like movement, movement, movement. Because then Benjamin goes up to the top, Van Dam gets up, shoves him off, and then Benjamin jumps up to the top rope, superplexes him. Insane movement. Benjamin is so athletic; it's insane. Uh, yeah, and then two minutes of stalling. Yep. Yeah. Another There's another no wheel kick. Another rolling thunder. Yeah. One two no. Another moon salt. No, yeah. There's no pacing. Yeah, it's yeah. not like, you know, you get heat for a while, then they go into a really extended bit. They do a bit they had planned and then just sleep for two minutes. Then they go to another bit they had planned, another two minutes of sleep. It's just so start, stop, that I literally fell asleep. Yeah, and pacing is just so integral, integral in these matches. I know a lot of people like those longer matches, like the Okada matches, but it, it, it's like you, if like on the fly you had to add another 10 minutes or take another it take like 20 minutes off of one of those matches it's like it, the pacing's gonna get fucked yeah like, it's really integral to you know there's some people who are ring generals that can just go and doesn't matter the time they can build something but i i think a lot of the time like they need to know how long they got because a lot of the times when they don't you can tell because they're just too many rest holds kind of laying around you know yeah i'll, I'll keep yeah. it going though we got we, i got the notes so we got our Van Dam hits a split leg of moonsault. RVD tries to set up another frog splash with a monkey flip. Benjamin lands on his feet. Rob has to hit another spinning heel kick. Avoid, Benjamin avoids the five star and hits him with a DDT. Another three count because Rob got his foot on the ropes. 
Uh, Shelton comes off the top, gets a crossbody. Van Dam rolls through for two. Um, Benjamin goes out of the ropes and grabs the Money in the Bank briefcase. Van Dam hits him with the Van Damator, hits the Frog Splash, and picks up the win. Gets both the title and the Money in the Bank. So we got a new champion tonight, Rob Van Dam. Looks yeah. great with both. I love it. I don't know why he has uh, a title and a chance to win a world <laughs> title. I don't know why they kept they could have done anything else, but but it's cool. Yeah, you know what? You know what's great about this? They don't make the Money in the Bank briefcase well, holder look like a dumbass and a geek and a loser, like they that, do nowadays. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. They make him look He's strong. He's not just like a weenie Are trying you... to be like, "I'm gonna get my title." He's actually like a competitor, and he won a belt. Wait, yeah. are you saying the current Money in the Bank holder is a geek? I'm just saying the current holders lately have been geeks. Yes. I don't know about They're the current one. geeks, or they have it for like two days. I mean, uh, all right, let's if just... you're a woman. Let's look current real quick. Damien Priest, nobody believes yep. he can go for the main belt, and nobody wants him to get the other belt. So they're they're stuck between, uh, what do we do? Does he go for the IC belt? Because last time Austin Theory cashed in on the United States belt and I, lost. I, I, well, I will say so. Damien Priest is in the right position for that main belt. but I doubt it. He's probably going to beat I, – I assume – here's my little mania – Haha, <laughs> stop gap. We're at, we're at Mania. I think Seth's oh, going to retain. Drew's going to get angry, beat him up, and then Damien's going to cash in and win the belt. And then we're all going to be big mad about it because they're going to lose the tag uh, belts. A uh, more mid champion than I know. Seth Rollins. Uh-huh. I can't believe it. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Drew face immediately. It's a good call. Unless they go all out and kill Cody's story, which that would be hilarious and Damien would be goaded for that. Yeah. Could you imagine, yeah. Martin? Cody yeah, crying at the end. They- <laughs> yeah, because they Priest. did it last year. Yeah, but Damian not... Priest is the one holding yeah, over. Well, he's not walking out of there with that fucking belt. They hate well, Dusty too much. I guess he at least won. I guess at least if you want it from Roman, that's something. But no, it's not. It, 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 it was mean... something last year. Now Dwayne's here. Nobody cares. Anyway, Dwayne. this is 2006. We're back in 2006. Dwayne. Welcome, Welcome Big Show. Big Show's here. No, you know... hold on. What? Well, I have to know two things. One, I think you said earlier, but I need to reiterate. Dave Meltzer gave this 3.75 stars out of five. And three for Carlito versus Chris Masters. I don't know what he was thinking in 2006. TNA was cooking in 06. What the fuck was he thinking? Dave had his headphones on, listening to Danko Jones. You you forgot to thank Danko Jones, Ty. Baby we'll hates me. We'll get there. No, it's right there. I have it written down right there. Hey. That is when Danko Jones comes out. It is before <laughs> we get to the big pain exploding. I was about to thank Ty. him. <laughs> what? Come on, Ty. Oh. Like you would forget to thank Danko Jones. Danko, please forgive me. Baby hates Ty now. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. All right, but what did Dave give Big Show Kane? Negative one star. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> that seems mean to me. Big, big Show's backstage. He's got a little boo This was better than Carlito and Masters. Let's be real. No, it wasn't. No. Yes, it was. 100% no. This was much more entertaining. <laughs> Listen, Big Show is very happy when he did Waterboy, so he has no, Kane has no excuse to be a fucking lunatic yeah. promoting yeah, his movie. Yeah, that's better than... Anything that happened in Carlito and Chris Masters, what's your problem? That was a problem. It doesn't count. It's a... <laughs> yes, it does. No. Something funny happens in the match. No. Also, also, Ty, throw up the pictures of Ward to look at him, Kane. Look, look at, at him. him. Why did he do that look to him? At him? I'll also try to put in the little bit of... Um, they kept doing... Big Show was like, ah! And then uh, and then Kane's like, ah! And Big Show's like, ah, my ear, ah! <laughs> And then Kane's face got warped to shit. <laughs> That's right. He bonked him hard. I don't know how the fuck Kane made him bleed. Anyway, we talked about that last week. Talked about that last talk- week. Hell. Now we're in the match. We got Kane versus Big Show. It's May 19th time. Emerald, tell me about it. All right. I thought May last 19th. segment was my segment, but I guess it's this time. No, you got Big Show versus Kane. Okay. So, we got the two... Biggest meat men currently in WWE right now. Big Show and Kane. Uh, they were a great tag team partner uh, team. 
But uh, then Kane made a movie and he became absolutely batshit insane. Started uh, hurting people anytime they mentioned May 19th, the release date of Kane's movie, See No Evil. I think the funny part is they don't ever show the movie either. No, they (laughs) never show a single commercial. No, they showed one. On Heat. On YouTube. They cut it all out of the Peacock version. Yes, yes, on (laughs) Heat. The bonus that that we scrounged up. Yep, we had to find it. (laughs) So, anyway, uh, got these two big meat men. Now, the thing is, because they are so large and in charge, they don't move very fast. So, while this show was heavy and meaty, it was not quick. It was not big. Because they, they, they come out into the ring, Kane's giving Big Show the crazy eye, and he he just slaps Big Show right away. Uh, they ring the bell, they start going at it. Now, I'm watching this the whole time. They're, they're hitting each other, picking each other up, slamming each other down. They're also trying to break each other's right arm specifically every fucking time. Kane really went hard on Big Show's arm. Uh, There's a lot of back and forth. Uh, Then it gets to a point where Big Show uh, looks at his finger, makes a little claw, and tries to go at Kane's eye. Uh, But uh, Kane manages to block it, uh, deflect it, send Big Show into the uh, ring, and it's going... We're good. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the lights turn red and a voice from the darkness just just starts going. Nineteen. No. No. Just, just constantly. No. He is, is no. Going insane. Ah. He's on the ground in the ring. He is writhing in pain. He's hitting his head. He is he is just pounding. <laughs> Big Show is just no. watching. Everyone is confused, and Big Show is just like, "I gotta put a stop to this." Grabs a metal chair, gets into the ring, gets Kane up, turns him around, pops him on the head with one big, and then the lights are back to normal, and Big Show just starts to leave. Everyone is everyone is not happy about this because it's just like they're ending the match there. Nobody really won. Uh, I think it's and, pretty crazy how they added like the birds spinning around Kane's head afterwards. It's pretty cool, but yeah, that I'm was surprised funny. they added how'd that. They do that. Good, uh, good bit. And then Kane just fucking gets up and has the he's fine now. Worst, worst, fucking evil grin on his face of all time. And also, I would like to state, when when the lights stopped being red and they went back to normal, these two were soaked in sweat. Like, like they just got out of the shower. That's how sweaty they went. For how long was their match, Ty? Like, eight minutes. Ten minutes? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, no big, contest. Nobody won, nobody lost. Big men. Very good shit. How did you like this more than Carlito Chris Masters, you fucker? <laughs> you woke up it and was, were like, yeah, this is good. Yeah. It was shorter, more things happened. One minute. And yeah, and several of that was just Kane being taunted by Kane from the Ether saying May 19th, you could have stopped it. Yeah. They could have stopped this I, match, but they didn't. I didn't have to watch people struggle to wrestle and Carlito wasn't here. <laughs> so, was this the most quiet crowd of all time? Yes. Yes, it was. Did every Big Show comeback get a nega pop? Absolutely. But they died. Well, Carlito and Chris Masters stabbed them and then Shelton and RVD shot them to death. So that's not on these guys. And also, Kane's breakdown got fixed by a protected chair shot to the head. Yeah. Candace Michelle yeah, comes so. into Vince's locker room. He goes, She goes, oh, I'm having this bad chest cold. Vince, my God, I need you to heal me. And Vince is like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, let me just. And he starts just touching her chest. 
And he's just like, oh, this is Vince. so fucking bad. Candace's like, oh, yes, save me, Vince. Save me. I love you, Vince. And she's, he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And Shane's just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And he's like, oh, oh, Shane. Oh, hey, oh. I'm trying to heal this woman. And she starts convulsing on the couch. And he's like, come on. We got to get ready for a match, dad. And they both leave. What was that? That is probably the worst segment. That I don't know. What's worse, this or the dog pussy segment? The dog pussy one. No, Ooh, but, but pussy this was actual rotten. assault. That's true, well, though. Was it? It's. You know he wrote that. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it, in the meta narrative, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but if, if we're talking storyline... We're not talking storyline here. That's uh, a dead-ass yeah, no. assault. Yeah, that is dead. And they kept yeah. it in the Peacock I, version. Yeah. Yeah. Vince says she has a tiny waist and a beautiful shoulders, which is the creepiest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. I, I, give, I give this a sexual assault out of 10. Jim Ross yeah. is outright offended by this segment. Yeah, so I, I, hold yeah, on. Vince, I, Vince and Shane leave the locker room. And what? Mark Henry is there. And we're like, what? Vince... Vince's like, what are you doing here? You're on SmackDown. He goes, what if it was me? Vince, what if it was me? Would you still be doing that? And then Vince walked away. And Mark Henry just got right up in the camera and started staring at you and said, learn, do you? And I was like, whoa. That was crazy. That was probably that probably saved the segment, honestly. I love Mark Henry. Yeah. I also no, let the bit die. Let the bit die. I love, I love Mark Henry. We'll put him back on Who SmackDown. Somebody go get we'll, uh, we're going to skip that match and go straight into the Matt Stryker segment first, and then we'll go to the match. Just telling all the people at home, because Matt Stryker's out here. Why? I don't know. But he's here to have our lesson of the day. Real quick. I watched this segment the last out of everybody, so I had everybody building up how terrible this was about to be. It, and oh boy, does it match it. Matt Stryker goes through the, the laundry list of being a heel. He starts saying how stupid Kentucky is, how they're the most edu- uneducated people. They're literal bottom feeders. They're all stupid. Not like him, of course. He's not stupid because he's a teacher. You're all You're all bad. And who does that make, uh, who, who in the back decides to call him out? Eugene. They, they, they called him Eugene to help out. <sighs> and so, Eugene comes in the ring and he goes, you're about as smart as everyone in here. Why don't you write your name? And Eugene grabs his chalk and he does his little bit. He wrote, Matt Stryker loves poop. Oh my god, he said it loves poop! And Matt Stryker is furious. Look at this little picture of him. He's so angry. I can't believe Eugene said I love poop. Did Eugene say that? The, it did get a chant from the crowd. I don't... I, I don't understand. Eugene starts picking his nose and then shoves it in his mouth. In Stryker's mouth. My bad. Stryker then attacks him. Eugene hits the stunner. Why? This is a. I've only I've been trying to catch up on all the heats and velocities I can watch. Eugene's been specifically just heat. Why is he here? We don't want you, Nick he, Densmore. He does. Matt Stryker does say he wasn't like script planned to be out here. Do you think they just had them do this to fill time? Absolutely. After the injury, hundred percent. The only we have we have skipped. Many, just so many offensive things that happened in this segment. But I can't. The not. best thing that happened in this segment is when Matt Stryker comes out. Jerry Lawler says, I, uh, I had a teacher that looked just like him. He was cross eyed and That's he got fair. fired because he couldn't control his pupils. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot yeah. I, I did yell about that. When you were yeah, I forgot it. about that zinger. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, oh so, shit! Yeah. Anyway, here's here is the uh, official raw down stance on everything that happened here. F- fuck Nick 
Dinsmore remove that cracker from my show. I'm going to kill 2006 Matt Stryker. What? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What? Like sure. Will Dave is going to come back and leave some Bowflexes around Matt Stryker instead. <laughs> no! Ooh, right. yeah! Right. Main right. event time, baby. The real main event's here, guys. We we lied earlier. That triple threat wasn't the real main event. No, not really. That's we got Shane we and gotta... Vince coming out. Vince is looking mighty, mighty orange. He spends the first five minutes of this bit yelling at God... I guess he got stuck in traffic. I mean, it's Easter, you know. It's a little busy out. I don't know if it's Easter in this moment, but it's Easter today. But Can we sh- talk about the match graphic for this show and this PNG of God they've created? Yes. Oh, dude. <laughs> a light from heaven with a rainbow in it at, like, 3P. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this but- whole match is... Like, th- this thing's written like poetry. I think this is how Vince McMahon actually views God. This is his vision. This is his Bible, which he's yeah. selling now for eighty dollars, just to compete with his best buddy. Jerry uh, Lawler re- does before Vince gets into all of this. He says, "You'd better respect all religions. You don't want to go to hell on a technicality." Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> um, yeah. Vince also announces that this is now no holds barred match. Anything goes. Cool sick uh god comes out he actually showed up he showed up on oh didn't uh didn't jerry say something about how he probably wouldn't show up because it's sunday it's his day off probably that's a good bit if if it was true but he showed up anyway got the heavenly music he got the spotlight and then says wait 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 no 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 that's not his music you guys are playing a trick on me and so they pull out uh ernest the cat miller's theme Brodus Clay theme, Xavier Woods theme, circa 2014. You got Funky's on a roll. Ah! Somebody call my mama. <laughs> Vince is doing a little dance, and the yeah, spotlight's dude. coming to the ring. I'm like, oh, gee, oh, God, what the fuck? This is awful. Vince demands God get jiggy with it, <laughs> and Vince starts dancing. Yeah. Yeah. On Easter, when God, come on. <laughs> when Spotlight God enters the ring, Vince demands the ref check him. <laughs> Fringe. <laughs> what a bit, dude. I don't even... <laughs> this match. It was so difficult to watch. Uh, Sean comes out, you know, the holy Christian man, the, the heavenly man is a sexy boy. Sexy boy. He's not a boy toy. Sexy boy. Such a good <laughs> dichotomy. <laughs> you think he's cute? You know he's sexy. This match sucked. This match was dog shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody what? else, please take this off me. <laughs> no. Well, no, uh, you love it. Yeah, you love it. I mean, you went into it. You might as well keep going. Uh, or do you want me to take over? It says Nico and Dave on the list, pal. I, oh, oh, you got to bring up the list now? Okay. It's got the list oh right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. Okay, Look. so obviously this gets turned into a no hold buzz match, right? I mean, we already went over that. Um, so of course Vince gets in his face for the start off, and of course the starting line is "You and God are going straight to hell." You know, come on, man. Mimicking his favorite wrestler, Randy Orton. That's right. That's right. Um, so. He basically, Sean starts beating them both up. He starts hitting the punches. He's got the heat right now. Um, and, you know, he gets Vince down, and then he starts kind of beating Sean up the ramp, just punching him and punching him and punching him. Uh, Shane's going to, you know, he gets a little heat back. He hits his little jabs, you know, his little MMA jabs. Goes, pss, pss, pss. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little Shane now, special. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, for those with the secret video quality, they can just see me do the jabs. But uh, you just have to watch the match otherwise. <laughs> uh, he goes for the bio driver, but Sean reverses it. Does I think it's the flapjack? I believe they call that one. I'm not I'm really sure. sure it you know, is, like, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, pancake press. Yeah, pancake press, whatever. Um, you know, then Vince joins just to get his shit kicked in. Um, he basically takes out. Uh, 
God, he takes Shane out by throwing him into the uh, stage prop, which I always like that when they use the um, actual, like, props to, like, do that for Like, uh, nowadays, a lot of the time, they do, like, just the uh, normal stage Titantron and stuff. But I, I don't know. Something about having, like, those special events where you got the, like, special props. I, I think that's always a good move. Then cross bodies hits Vince through the floor off the ramp. So they're down for a while. And Dave, what are you thinking at this moment when he goes through the floor? Dude, uh, I mean, it was cool. But I just don't. Look, I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. Okay. This whole time. Mm-hmm. All of these Raws we've ever done, ever. Yes. Has been leading up to this moment. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have not I have not been sufficiently whelmed by this by the snooze of just an event. Here, Dave. I got big yeah. Dave. He gave this a three and one quarter match. How? <laughs> How did this get more than anything? Like <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, you gotta like Nico, listen. Listen, yeah. Nico, you're doing it. <laughs> You're doing a great job <laughs> recapping this match. Am I? I want you to know, I've just like, I've deleted it from my brain. Because it was nothing. I was so upset that yeah. I was waiting for this god battle. And it's just, it was nothing. This god, was yeah. nothing. Guy's I, trying well, to take this from us. That, that's, that's why I'm throwing it to you. <laughs> to, help, to help you get some of your memories back. We're going to just... we're gonna match striker this, huh? I'm going to teach you the lesson on this match. This is just... All right, please. All right. All right. Please. Tag me in. Tag me in. I look like Warped Kane right now. (laughs) Tag me in, Nico. Tag me in, Nico. All right. I'll tag you in at this point. Ah! This match is just a fucking recap of fucking Mania match. (laughs) This is just the same (laughs) bullshit. Beat for beat. I don't know why fucking uh, Big Dave loves this match. Three and a fucking quarter. Are you kidding me? This shit's stupid. You know, garbage can <laughs> spots, all the same shit. You get to see everything, but worse because here's the Spirit Squad. Oh no, they're oh, down God. here. Oh, I forgot. They fly yeah, on in. Important too, note. Nothing too quick, you motherfucker. Important yeah. note: this match goes 19 plus minutes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that to everyone at home. Right. But listen, well, it wasn't like it was a three-minute match I just stopped caring about. This shit went on for so long. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I'll, I'll just run through the rest of it. I hated uh, this. Yeah, so protective chair shot to Sean as he's climbing up by the stage. You know, Sean's now bleeding. Shane's punches, I believe, heal people because they're so terrible. So it's like if this was like a video game, like punch to heal. Like that's kind of how I see his punches half the time. Cause every time he punches somebody, they always get up on him too. Uh, but he puts him down with a lariat. Shane beats him to the ring, you know, healing punches by the ring side. They get him back in the ring. Now, Sean dodges the top rope elbow from Shane, which is how he gets it. But Vince is back in the ring. He takes his belt off and he starts whipping Sean, probably yelling things about Jesus. Like, how's it feel? Uh, he, I, I thought JR did a good line. He said, he got beat and bloody at his greatest creation just four weeks ago, referring to WrestleMania. I, like I said, I like how JR kind of takes, like, that whole God angle, but he builds it back into the wrestling. He then incentivize not incentivizes, he reminds everyone how important WrestleMania is, but he also ties it into the story. Again, that's why JR's just the best. Uh... Vince gets the mic, and I have the whole transcript, or at least a very lightly paraphrased transcript here, of what he told uh, Sean. What do you think now? What do you think now, God? Look at him. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it now, God, huh? Come on. Wait a minute. Where the hell are you going? God, come back. Come back here, God. Look at what you made made in your own image. Look at him. He's a piece of crap. Where are you going, God? God, come back. Ladies and gentlemen, God has left the building. Oh, man, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> but you have it. Now come up here. Yeah, come on up here. Can you tell this? I'm going to knock your teeth right down your throat. Which, he tries to do a very mockingly sweet chin, but he goes into the big boot instead. Just to get caught and get his shit knocked out. Let me tell you about this speech, though, that Vince did. <laughs> this is just him as a little boy praying to God. 
That's all this is. <laughs> this is him at the moment he decided he was no longer a Christian man and he was just going to make this angle like 30, 40 years later in his life. Preach. Like, like the, I mean, Dave says this is a snooze. I disagree. This is watching a man jerk off for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's all Dude. this is. <laughs> this is him joking off that he's the greatest fucking thing and he didn't need God. That's all this fucking shit is. But, yeah, yeah, but then, so you have the father and the son, right? Yeah. And the Holy Spirit squad. That's and, what and I, the yep, Holy that's Spirit right. squad. That's right, baby. Yeah. Folks that, at home, we figured I was it out. like, I was like, why is the Spirit Squad here? And then Ty yells, oh, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit Squad. And then I got up and walked away from the TV and yelled for about five minutes. That that's what all of this was for. <laughs> that's I, all that's right. of this was for. That and future stuff we're not going to see for probably another few months. <sighs> Man, uh, you know what really uh, sucks? Huh. I actually enjoyed that match until the Spirit Squad came and ruined it for me. Yeah, honestly, well, because they didn't invite you. Yeah, yeah they forgot Walk the sixth member. <laughs> Can't believe Benny wasn't invited. God wow. damn it! I hate this bit. It's so ah! good, Benny. I hate this bit. It'll be all right, Ben. Oh no. R.I.P. Benny. He's dead now. R.I.P. Benny. But um, during that pinfall, yep. Jerry yells, "This is bullshit." <laughs> Oh, well, we got a little <laughs> more before the spirit squad comes up. Oh, my God, yeah. So, so uh, Sean gets fired up. He gets knocked down. He does his famous kick up. Shane hits Vince on accident Ooh. with the chair shot, which... One of the nastiest ones I've ever seen. Yes. yes. Uh, I'll say this. Crunch? Anytime Vince has to take a hit, man, he goes all in. Even at 72, he was taking yeah. a head butt bleeding all over the place I, i'll say that he's dedicated to his craft man i mean uh, there's anything nice you can say that that's one of the few things you probably could pull out he should have actually blown himself up in that car he probably should have <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you know what and i think he's committed enough to do it uh again sean is like pounding basically beating both of them up he hits one with the elbow sweets chins both but he doesn't go for the pin this is just like WrestleMania, where he takes forever to pin Vince because he's kind of hot dog and grandstanding a bit. So, and unfortunately, he didn't take the lessons from God, and this is going to bite him in the ass. He gets them set up with the tables. He's about to elbow drop both of them. He does oh, hit the socket. He does, he does hit the socket. He does hit the socket. He does but hit all the of a sudden, he does hit the oh, socket. He's standing on the ladder. He's ready to go. And then Benny's gang comes in. Oh, no. And they're about to charge. And I I do like that instead of climbing down the ladder like you would have saw in the 2010s and like just getting get stuff beat up, he actually goes for the elbow drop on the spirit squad. But, of course, this is math. And Shawn Michaels isn't good at math. No. It's 5v1, does not work out too well, and he gets his shit kicked in. Uh, the Spear Squad come in, they remove him from the ladder. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not the ladder. They remove him, uh, Vince and Shane from the tables, and they do their Spear Squad slam to Sean on, in the table. Vince, yeah, just that, um, he's gooning at this point. He's ready to <laughs> imagine. He's just ready to burst. And he gets that pin. One, two, three. Just comes all over Shawn Michaels. This is bullshit. Wins. wins. Yep. Which, uh, again. I'm sorry. JR, I'm, just this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sick of this. Do you think, How the hell can Vince McMahon live with himself? It's do you think JR life. knew that? Dude. Does he know? Does he know? Or did, he, did they have to make him... <laughs> they're, they're like, hey... Listen, Sean's gonna win, and then when Vince wins, well, like, oh, what the fuck? Ah. No, uh, Jr's been on interviews that he doesn't like to get the finishes. He basically, and he doesn't like watch the ring like uh, a lot of the commentators. Do. He exclusively watches the TV broadcast, and he reacts with the audience. That's crazy. So he was yeah, genuinely no, he, mad. Consummate yeah, professional. Yeah, yeah, he's a complete professional. So he's like genuinely mad. 
Yeah, he was shooting on Vince this whole segment. <laughs> oh, yeah, at one point he was. he was like, I might get fired for this. He, he also kept calling Shane the demon seed, and Shane's been the only one that's been like, hey, you know what, Dad, this has not been good. I don't I don't really agree with this, but I guess I'll have to do it because you're my dad. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, the demon seed! The disgusting Shane McMahon! I, I hate this man! And Jared just keeps killing well, kill him. Because uh, Shane's still a bad guy. Like, yeah. In the rest of the stuff, but it's just... The this, demon seed? <laughs> yeah. But <at> this point, <laughs> because, well, if... If Vince McMahon's the devil, then he's the demon seed. It, it's it's like how Alicon yeah, like it, it tracks, but it's not good. Track. Yeah. Yeah. Listeners at uh, six hundred sixty-six patrons, we will all send you our demon seed. This is true. And then, true. I think we got Rod down. <laughs> all right, ending on a cum joke. Cool. Always. <laughs> 